Hello folks, let's talk about the new time data type for Salesforce flows in Summer 25 release. Now, if you played with objects in the object manager, you may have noticed that you can use two different types of fields for date and time. You either use date or you use date and time together. You don't really have a time type, right? Let's say you want to create a custom object and on this custom object, you want the user to pick just the time without the date. That doesn't seem possible. And some of the formula functions that you would need to operate on time are also lacking. Like if you have played with field service and things like that, you know, like the um, service appointments and all kinds of appointments, events, uh, and you try to manipulate date and time, uh, you've probably dealt with kind of parsing date and time field values and trying to extract the hour or the minute out of it so that you could add some numbers to it. You could, you could maybe change the date to match the particular time zone or something like that. And, you know, I've done that in the past and it is super cumbersome, super difficult. Now, Salesforce decided with Summer 25 release, we are going to have a new data type in Salesforce flows, and that's going to be the time data type. So now if you want to capture, save time in a variable, and you want to process it using certain functions, you can do that. There are also new functions that actually come with the new uh, time data type. So without further ado, let's dive into this video. I'm going to show you how I use the new time functions to create a random number because we don't really have a random number generator function in Salesforce flows so that we can randomly select a lead, for example, and then, you know, send them an email which will notify them, we are going to give them a swag as a prize or something like that, right? So let's go into the video and look at the use case I've built. I would like to explain how I built this using a diagram before we jump into Salesforce and go on the flow builder. Now we're going to have a lead screen and on this lead screen, we're going to have a data table. And this data table is going to show multiple leads. So I want the user to be able to go in there and then select multiple leads from this list. And when they select multiple leads, I want to show uh, reactively the list of the leads that they have selected, like, you know, Mike, Susan, John. This is going to work reactively. And once they have made their selection. Uh, I'm going to generate a random number. Let's say they've selected three leads. I want to generate a random number. It's going to be either one, two, or three. And uh, that number is going to determine who won the prize that I have um, selected for this winner. And it's going to go to an email action and that email action is going to email this person um, the news, right? You know, we are going to be sending out the swag for you as a price. And I will also have a result screen that shows uh, the result, right? You know, this person has won. Now I'm going to use a couple uh, of the new functionalities here to demonstrate some of the summer 25 features. What are they? Like, first of all, the reactive functionality is rather new. We have a brand new functionality that came in summer 25. That is the conditional reactivity. Now I tried to use conditional reactivity here and I wanted to run my screen action that shows this list, compiles this list. Uh, only after the user selected the first data table row, but that does not seem to work as intended. I have a case open 
with Salesforce, there may be a bug related to that one. So they are looking into that. So we could use the conditional uh, screen action functionality here to compile this list. And the way that works is we can create an auto launch flow that's going to be automatically launched uh, based on the conditions we determine and going to compile this list for us, which then will be reactively shown on the screen for the user. Now, in the email action, we are going to use the new functionality that uh, allows us to build the email body right inside the action. So we have a rich text editor that uh, we will use to compile the email content, the email body content right within the action. So that's brand new. It's good functionality. And uh, obviously, we are going to also use here the random generation formula functions. And these formula functions are new. There is a millisecond uh, formula function that extracts the millisecond out of the time now function. Time now function gives us the current time. And millisecond is going to give us one thousandth of a second so i can generate once i manipulate that the way i want i can generate a number between one and one thousand which then i can prorate and ratio and then generate randomly the winning number among these folks over here right you know one two or three so let's jump right into this well, it's kind of nice to plan this out on a diagram because a lot of times you will have to build your screen action before you build the screen flow. In this example, it may not matter that much, but still I'm going to show you the auto launch flow first. So what we are going to do here in the screen action flow, which is an auto launch flow that you build and activate, which then will be selected and will be made available to the screen flow right inside that data table screen. Now in this flow, what I'm doing is I have an input here, right? My input variable is going to be my lead collection record variable. So it's going to receive a lead collection as input, right? Once it receives the lead collection as input, I'm going to transform the names of the leads into a collection text variable. Well, this is not really required. This is another rather new functionality I used here and I wanted to showcase. So if you have a record variable here on the left side, you can create a text variable on the right side using this panel over here, text collection variable, in fact. And you can connect the first name to the right side. And what that's going to do for you is it's going to create a simple collection text variable out of the first names of the leads that you have. And then you can loop through those. Now you may ask yourself, can I loop through the collection record variable and do this? Absolutely, you can do it that way as well. I just wanted to showcase the transform function out here. So now I'm looping through that text collection variable, which is the names and uh, I'm assigning the names to a name CSV text variable. I'm assigning each name uh, to this text variable. It's a single text variable. It's not a collection and I'm adding a comma and a space right after it. Every iteration I go through, let's say I have three names, I'm adding Mike, Susan, and John to the list. And these all will, will be separated by a comma and a space. And because I'm looping three times, at the end of the third name, I'm still going to have a comma and a space, which I will have to either stop doing on my last iteration. I can check via decision, or I can just remove the last redundant characters here using a formula. So, um, in my final step out of the loop, I'm assigning to the name CSV text variable a new value. And that's my formula, remove comma formula. And all that this formula does is it's going to take the previous value of the name CSV text variable, check the length 
and then shorten the length by two, kind of clipping the two last characters out of the whole string, which will then get rid of the last and redundant comment space. And it's going to return that value to the parent screen flow in that screen action. So if I go to my name CSV text variable, I see that it's available for output here, right? So that would be the auto launch flow that I will use as a screen action. So if I go to the parent flow, the screen flow here, here what I have is a get leads step. I'm getting all the leads in the org where the email is not null because I am going to have to email the winner. And just for good measure, I'm also limiting my get to 2000 elements because if my org has, let's say, 100,000 leads, uh, I may actually go over the governor limits. Um, when you're specifying an upper limit for your get, you can use a maximum of uh, 2000. You can't really specify a number higher than that, but that's more than enough for us. This is my preview org that I'm using for the new release. It doesn't really have a lot of data. It can't really hold a lot of data. I have to frequently clean it so that I won't hit the limits. So if I go to my lead screen, I have a data table here that shows the leads from get leads, and it does allow for multiple selection. And here I have the part where I added a display text component that shows the result from the screen action, the auto launch flow I just shared with you. So that resource will be available once you configure your screen action here. And that is done at the screen level. If I click on the screen, you will see I selected this auto launch flow as a screen action and I gave it an API name. I called it name list result. So the output resource will be under that. I'm feeding as an input to this auto launch flow, the lead data table selected rows, collection record variable. Those are my um, selected lead records and I can select multiple. And here is the part where I decide whether this action needs to run every time the screen loads, only first time the screen loads. And I can also add additional conditions for when this action should be running. And this is where I specified this action should only run when my first selected row ID is not null, which then produced results only after the second selection, not the first selection, which is odd. That's where I opened the case to Salesforce for this to be investigated. It could be a bug. But you can now in this release specify when the screen action will be run. It doesn't have to be run every time the screen loads or there's an update. All right, so if I see the output resources here, so the name CSV text variable is one of the resources and that's what I'm using right here, right? You know, to display the selection on the screen. All right, once I do that, I'm assigning the count of this collection record variable to count leads variable. And I'm assigning the winner count variable. And that number is going to come out of a function that I have created for the random number formula. And this is my random number formula. By the way, this flow is not the subject of a comprehensive blog post. So check salesforcerate.com for this formula right here. You can copy and paste it into your own flow very easily using salesforcerate.com. Now, what this one says is use the time now function and then extract the millisecond from time, time now. I think that would be a number between zero and 999. So I added one to it. I wanted to get uh, a number between one and 1,000. And I can ratio that to the number of leads that the user selected, right? You know, I don't really need a number from one to 1,000. If the user selects 
exactly 1,000 records, that's what I would need. But if they select three records, I need a number um, that is going to be between one and three. So then I'm going to ratio that and round that and add one to it because this can generate again zero, which I don't want. But in the end, this generates a random number between one and three if the user selects only three records, right? So I assigned this value to a variable here because I noticed when I was going through my debugging, it seemed like the number, the random number that the debug was using was changing uh, when it was going through the loop. I don't think this is going to happen in production because in production, everything kind of happens at the same time. But still, even in debug, I wanted to produce predictable results. So I assigned the value to a variable to kind of freeze that value. So then I'm looping through the selected rows in the data table. And I'm actually using a counter to determine which record I'm on. And I'm determining using a decision whether the current record is the winner, right? You know, whether the two numbers are equal. If they are equal, then I found the winner. I'm going to assign the lead record uh, for the winner to a record variable. And that record variable I'm going to use in my send email action. And here you'll see that I can use the compose email content here right inside the action. I can actually use resources in my subject. It doesn't look like I can use them. Um, a lot of times people will create formula resources to compile, to generate a subject line. You don't really have to do it that way. You can actually refer to resources here. You can copy and paste from other areas right here, for example, uh, if you don't want to get confused about the syntax. And here is the body of the email. And you want to set the rich text formatted body to true because this is rich text. You want this to be displayed in rich text. I don't know why that's not showing right now. It's thinking. Uh, but it's set to true. And the recipient ID is the lead record variable ID. So you're sending the email to the email address on the lead record. And I chose the log email on sent to true so that you know the email content can be logged on the lead record. All right, so this is the flow in a nutshell. So let's debug this and see how this works. All right. So we have a list of leads here, many leads in this org. And the user can go in here and then select a couple, right? You know, so Eddie Brock, Donald Atkin, and Diana Prince, three of these here. And they happen to have the same email address, by the way. So as I'm selecting, you see that the list is being compiled down here and shown, right, reactively. I'm going to deselect, see Eddie disappeared. Donald, Diana disappeared. And I'm going to add again. And I click next and it says the winner is at the bracket and email has been sent for notification. So where is the email? I'll show you the email just now. As you can see, the email has been received at the email address for the lead. Congratulations, Eddie Brock. You won our drawing this month. Please respond to this email with your address and we will send your swag to your address. Thanks. So voila, folks, in a nutshell, this is how you can use a couple of the recent functionalities that we have in Salesforce Flows. The time data type, the time now function, millisecond function, the, the screen action using conditions, the transfer element, and the new email action with the email body compiled right inside the email action. Enjoy.